Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom had five daughters. Though most of her daughters are well known, her son-in-laws are not as well known. Hopefully this video will provide an insight into the eventful lives of her sons-in-law. Frederick III, German Emperor, was born on the 18th of October 1831. He was given the name Frederick William and was born during his grandfather Frederick William III of Prussia's reign. Frederick was a member of the House of Hohenzollern, the family that ruled Prussia. Prussia was the most powerful state in Germany at the time. Frederick's father, William, was forced to marry Princess Augusta of Saxe Weimar. The couple were polar opposites in personality. William had been raised in the military traditions of the Hohenzollerns and developed conservative views. Augusta was raised in Weimar, where citizens had greater participation in running of the state and had liberal views. The marriage was unhappy and Frederick had a lonely childhood. He had only one younger sister named Louise who he was very close to. In 1840, Frederick's uncle succeeded his grandfather as Frederick William IV. Throughout Frederick's childhood and teens, liberals sought to unify Germany with popular representation and a constitution. In 1848, when Frederick was 17, a series of political uprisings spread across Germany and Europe. Though not much changed in Germany, the sentiments had an influential effect on Frederick. Frederick received a classical education as well as a military education. He was intelligent and excellent at four languages. It was expected of him that he would maintain an active career in the military, but he broke with tradition and entered the University of Bonn, studying history, law, governance and public policy. His time in university helped him develop his liberal beliefs further. Arranged marriages were common amongst royalty in the 1800s. Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom and her husband, Prince Albert, were keen for a marriage between their eldest daughter, Victoria, Princess Royal and Frederick, to strengthen the British-Prussian ties. Frederick's father wanted Frederick to marry a Russian Grand Duchess, while his mother was keen for him to marry Victoria. Augusta sent Frederick to England in 1851 to visit the Great Exhibition to further influence his liberal views. While there, Frederick met the 11-year-old Princess Victoria, who conversed with him in fluent German. He was impressed by her, and when he returned to Prussia, Frederick and Victoria would exchange letters for many years. In 1855, Frederick returned to Britain and proposed to Victoria. Her parents made them wait until Victoria was at least 17 before marrying. Their engagement was announced on the 19th of May, 1857, and their wedding took place on the 25th of January, 1858, in the Chapel Royal at St. James's Palace, London. They had a loving marriage and were compatible on many levels. Frederick was promoted to Major General in Prussia to mark the occasion. The couple moved into the Crown Prince's Palace and had eight children together, Willem, Charlotte, Henry, Sigismund, Victoria, Waldemar, Sophia and Margaret. Sigismund and Waldemar died young and their eldest son Wilhelm suffered from Herb's palsy and mild brain damage from his traumatic birth. Wilhelm shared none of his parents' liberal beliefs and this caused a rift between the parents and their son. On the 2nd of January 1861, Frederick's father became King William I and Frederick became the Crown Prince. William was conservative and clashed with the Prussian Diet or government. The Liberals had a majority in the Diet, but the Chancellor Otto von Birchmark was conservative. Frederick and von Birchmark would clash often. In September 1862, Frederick was almost crowned king when William threatened to abdicate if the Diet refused to fund the army's reorganisation. Frederick was appalled and pleaded with his father to reconsider. 
he did and appointed Otto von Birschmark as Chancellor. Birschmark would ignore or overrule the Diet, which led to Frederick clashing with his father. Frederick wanted to unify Germany by peaceful means, but it was Birschmark's policy of blood and iron that won out. Frederick was not allowed to take part in matters of state, but did continue to represent Germany abroad. Frederick was opposed to war, but once war started, he supported the Prussian military and took positions of command. When Prussia and Austria defeated the Danes and conquered Jutland, they spent years fighting over who would assume leadership, which resulted in the Austro-Prussian War. Frederick was the only member of the Prussian Crown Council to uphold the rights of the Duke of Augustenburg and opposed the idea of going to war against Austria. When war broke out with Austria, Frederick took up command of one of the Prussian armies. Following many wars and many victories for Prussia, the German states unified into the German Empire in 1871, with William as the Emperor and Frederick as the Crown Prince. Frederick often sided with the country's liberals who opposed the expansion of the army. Frederick took part in many public works, such as the establishment of schools, churches and museums. During the 1870s and throughout much of Frederick's later life, there were efforts to disemancipate the Jewish people in Germany. Frederick and Victoria were completely opposed to this. One day, Frederick wore his field marshal uniform and attended a synagogue service with Victoria to show support for tolerance. Frederick gave a speech afterwards, denouncing the anti-Semitic movement. His actions were criticised by many upper-class people, including his own son, Wilhelm. Frederick was a heavy smoker, and by 1887, he began to feel pain in his throat, affecting his ability to speak. He consulted a doctor who attempted to remove the tumour, unsuccessfully. Frederick and Victoria went to the spa to help but it had little effect on his throat. In May, he was diagnosed with cancer of the throat. Moral Mackenzie, a leading British cancer specialist, was placed on Frederick's medical team, and he had a biopsy of his throat sent for testing. The biopsy came back negative for any cancerous growth, and Mackenzie opposed laryngectomy, which Frederick's team had recommended. All Mackenzie did was cauterization of the throat, which helped initially, but Frederick's condition continued to worsen. By the end of 1887, Frederick was being given cocaine injections for pain. Frederick caught many colds and his throat would swell. He was ordered by his doctors not to speak for great lengths, however by November he had completely lost his voice and a new growth was discovered on his left vocal cord. Mackenzie continued to insist that there was nothing wrong with the crown prince. However, the doctors of Frederick's medical team insisted that it was fatal and Mackenzie eventually agreed that it was. It was unlikely that Frederick would live for many more months. His throat would often become inflamed and he would have difficulty breathing. To help with this, a tracheal tube was fitted to allow Frederick to breathe. On the 9th of March 1888, three days after Frederick had been informed that he had cancer, Frederick's father, William I, died and Frederick became the German Emperor and King of Prussia. He took the regnal name of Frederick IV. As his health declined, Frederick insisted on doing as much as he could with what little time he had, but was unable to accomplish much. By June, his health failed and he died on the 15th of June, 1888, after only 99 days on the throne. He was immediately succeeded by his son, Willem II. His wife attempted to spread his liberal views, but had no power in government to actually enact any of these liberal views. Louis IV, Grand Duke of Hesse and Bayreuth. Louis IV was Grand Duke of Hesse and Mayrhein from 1877 to 1892 and is best known for his marriage to Princess Alice of the United Kingdom, the second daughter of Queen Victoria. Tragically losing his wife and youngest daughter to diphtheria, 
Louis would go on to reign as Grand Duke of Hesse and Bayreuth for almost 15 years. Louis was born in Prince Karl Palace in Darmstadt, the capital of the Grand Duchy of Hesse and Bayreuth, on the 12th of September 1837. He was the first son and child of Prince Charles of Hesse and Bayreuth and Princess Elizabeth of Prussia. He was a great-grandson of King Frederick William II of Prussia through his mother. He had three siblings, Henry, Anna and William. Louis's uncle, Louis III, Grand Duke of Hesse and Bayreuth, had no legitimate children, so Louis's father and Louis were first and second in the line of succession respectively to the Grand Ducal throne. In 1860, Prince Louis met Victoria, Crown Princess of Prussia. She was the eldest child of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. Victoria had visited the court of Hesse to inspect Louis's younger sister Anna as a potential bride for the Prince of Wales, Victoria's younger brother. Although Victoria was not impressed with Anna, she was impressed with Louis and Henry, one of Louis's brothers. Louis and Henry were invited to Windsor Castle in Britain under the guise of watching the Ascot races with the British royal family and also visiting the British royal family. However, it was really so the Queen could inspect them as potential sons-in-law. It was there that Louis met Princess Alice, Queen Victoria's second daughter. Louis and Alice were immediately attracted to each other and got on like a house on fire. Before Louis and Henry departed, Louis asked Alice for her photograph. They became engaged on the 30th of April, 1861, after Louis asked for permission from the Queen. In December, 1861, Alice's father, Prince Albert, died and the British court went into mourning. Despite this, the Queen insisted that the wedding go ahead. On the 1st of July, 1862, Louis married Princess Alice on the Isle of Wight in Britain. Due to the fact that the British court was still in mourning, Alice was only allowed to wear white for the ceremony and was then forced to put black clothes back on. Other members of the family present had to wear black. The Queen remarked that it was more like a funeral than a wedding. The Queen allowed her son-in-law the style of His Royal Highness while in the UK. He was also made a Knight of the Garter. Louis and Alice became parents less than a year after the wedding. They had seven children together, Victoria, Elizabeth, Irene, Ernest Louis, Friedrich, Alex and Marie. Their most notable descendants include Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh and the children of the last Tsar of Russia. The couple had financial troubles throughout their marriage and could not support the lifestyle that was expected of their rank. Because of this, they moved into an old house in the centre square of Darmstadt and used Alice's dowry to supplement their income. Alex quickly made their new house into a home. Though Louis was a dutiful husband and cared deeply about Alice, he could not engage with her on a level she desired. While she was interested in social work, science and charity, he was not, and she had to turn to other people for intellectual conversations. Tragedy would strike the family for the first time in 1873, when their youngest son Friedrich, or Fritti as he was known in the family, suffered a fatal fall from a palace window. He was only two years old and had haemophilia. Two of their other children, Irene and Alex, would also be affected by the haemophilia gene. They would pass it on to some of their children. Fritti's death damaged the relationship of Louis and Alice, as Louis did not know how to support his wife in her grief. During the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, Hesse fought on the Austrian side putting Alice and her sister Victoria on opposite sides of the war. Louis commanded the Hessian cavalry. Austria was defeated in the war and there was a real threat of Hesse being consumed into Prussia. 
However, Hesse was spared only due to the close kinship between Prussia and Hesse. During the Franco-Prussian War, Louis fought on the side of Prussia, commanding the 25th Division of the North German Confederation. His military service helped mend the previous war's grievances with the ruling family of Prussia, the Hohenzollerns. Louis was in friendly terms with the crown princely couple, Frederick and Victoria. In 1877, Louis's father and uncle died, and Louis became the Grand Duke. Tragedy would strike the family again in November 1878. Louis's family was struck with diphtheria, and tragically, his four-year-old daughter Marie and his wife Alice would both die from the disease. From then on, he reigned and raised his five children by himself. Louis would fall in love again and would marry on the 30th of April, 1884, to Countess Alexandrine Hutchinkapska. However, this was the eve of his eldest daughter's wedding. And the couple faced objections from Louis's family, as Alexandrine was not ranked high enough to be marrying a Grand Duke, and the marriage was considered morganatic. Due to the objections from his family, the couple separated within a week, and within three months of the marriage, they were annulled. Louis would reign for another eight years, before dying on the 13th of March, 1892, from a heart attack. He was immediately succeeded by his only surviving son, Ernest Louis, who became the last reigning Grand Duke of Hesse and Bayreuth. Prince Christian of Schleswig-Holstein was a German prince who became a member of the British royal family after marrying the fifth child of Queen Victoria, Princess Helena. Christian was born in Augustenburg Palace on the 22nd of January 1831. He was the second son of Christian August II, Duke of Schleswig-Holstein and Louise Sophie of Daniskoid Samso. He had six siblings, Alexander, Louisa Augusta, Caroline, Amelie, Wilhelmine, Friedrich and Henrietta. In 1848, Christian's father resisted the claims of the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein for Denmark. Holstein was a part of the German Confederation but was controlled by the kings of Denmark. In 1847, Frederick VII ascended the Danish throne without any legitimate children. In Denmark, the law stated that the throne could pass to women, but in Schleswig-Holstein, only men could inherit the throne. The duchy would most likely revert to the schleswig sonderburg augustenburg branch of the family. A war ensued and Prince Christian served in the Schleswig-Holstein army before he and his family were forced to flee. After the war, Christian attended the University of Bonn where he became good friends with Prince Frederick of Prussia, the future Frederick III German Emperor. Frederick would marry Victoria, Princess Royal, the sister of Christian's future wife. On a visit to Coburg in May 1865, Christian and Helena met. They were strongly attracted to each other. By December, they were engaged to each other. Despite opposition from several of Helena's siblings, Helena's mother, Queen Victoria, supported the match, as did Victoria, Crown Princess of Prussia and Princess Royal, Helena's oldest sister. Helena and Christian agreed to live near Queen Victoria. Christian was raised to a Royal Highness. They were wed on the 5th of July 1866 and lived in Frogmore House. Christian was appointed as Ranger of the Windsor Great Park. Together they had six children. Christian Victor, born in 1867, Albert in 1869, Helena Victoria in 1870, Mary Louise in 1872, Harold in 1876 and a stillborn son in 1877. Their son Harold died at eight days old. As their family expanded, in 1872 they moved into Cumberland Lodge 
and when they were in London, they would stay at Buckingham Palace. Prince Christian was a favourite child-in-law of Queen Victoria and was created a Knight of the Garter and a Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order as well as an aide-de-camp of both Queen Victoria and his brother-in-law, Edward VII. Christian had no particular job or career and was content to assist his mother-in-law when necessary. The Queen would often call for him to read for her or handle any other matters. In 1891, Prince Christian lost an eye when his brother-in-law, Prince Arthur, Duke of Connacht, accidentally shot Christian in the face while out on a shooting party. Christian made the best out of the situation and amassed a large collection of glass eyes. Sometimes he would wear a glass eye that was completely different in colour to the other eye to shock people. Queen Victoria died in 1901 and Christian and his family were given Deveshki House as their London residence. This house would remain in their family until the 1940s. Christian and Helena often represented Edward VII at foreign functions, such as the silver anniversary celebration of the German Emperor and Empress, who were the niece and nephew of both Christian and Helena. Christian was the uncle of Augusta Victoria, the German Empress, while Helena was the aunt of Willem II, the German Emperor. During his wife's rehabilitation from an opioid addiction, Christian was supportive and helped her recover. In 1916, Christian and Helena celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, the first in the British royal family to celebrate this milestone since George III and Queen Charlotte. In July 1917, Christian and his family gave up their German titles after being asked to by George V. Christian and his family still retained their princely titles, but were forced to drop their of Schleswig-Holstein designation. Christian and Helena had one grandchild, Valerie, born to their son, Albert. She was born out of wedlock and never had any children of her own, so Christian and Helena's line ended with her. Prince Christian died on the 28th of October 1917. John Campbell, 9th Duke of Argyll, was the husband of Princess Louise of the United Kingdom, fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. He was known as the Marquess of Lorne from 1847 until 1900 and was Governor General of Canada from 1878 to 1883. John was born on the 6th of August 1845, the eldest son of 12 children. His parents were George Campbell, the 8th Duke of Argyll, and Lady Elizabeth Sutherland Levinson Tower. His siblings were Archibald, Walter, Edith, Elizabeth, George, Colin, Victoria, Evelyn, Francis, Mary and Constance. In 1847, his father became the 8th Duke of Argyll and John assumed the courtesy title of Marquess of Lorne. He was educated at Edinburgh Academy, Eton College, the University of St Andrews and Trinity College, Cambridge. He went on to study at the National Art Training School. Beginning in 1868, John served in the House of Commons. He made little oppression while in Parliament. In 1866, John was appointed Lieutenant Colonel Commandant of the Art Time 1st Argyll and Butte Artillery Volunteers. He gave up the position in the 1880s. John married Princess Louise on the 21st of March 1871 at St George's Chapel. The marriage was met with opposition from the princess's family because John was not of royal blood. There had been no marriage of a member of the royal family and a commoner since 1515, when Charles Brandon married Mary Tudor, the sister of Henry VIII. Despite the protests from Louise's siblings, Queen Victoria saw the marriage as an opportunity for new blood to enter into the family. The Queen offered him a peerage and would do so over many years but John refused each time. He would one day inherit the Argyll dukedom and wanted to remain a member of the House of Commons. 
The marriage was childless and unhappy and they did not spend much time together. John had many close friendships with men, including Ronald Gower, Morton Fullerton and the Count de Monet, who were either gay or bisexual. These friendships sparked rumours that John was also gay or bisexual. John and Louise lived in Argyll House in London, and then moved into a house on Grosvenor Square. The Queen eventually offered them apartment number one at Kensington Palace, which would be their primary home for much of their married life. They then bought Dorndon in Kent and used several houses owned by the Argyll family in Scotland. In 1878, John was appointed Governor General of Canada and he served there for five years. Louise accompanied him and they travelled extensively throughout Canada. Louise and John managed to win over the Canadian people and they contributed heavily to the establishment of the Royal Society of Canada, the National Gallery and the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts. During their time in Canada, they held balls, parties, dinners and state events. Upon returning to Canada, Queen Victoria appointed John as Governor and Constable of Windsor Castle. John took the position seriously and wrote a history of Windsor Castle. In 1895, John and Louise purchased Rosneth Castle in Scotland from his father and using Louise's dowry, they renovated it. That same year, John was elected to Parliament, representing Manchester South. On the 24th of April in 1900, John's father died and John succeeded him as the 9th Duke of Argyll. John and Louise's finances became strained especially with the added inheritance taxes. To meet the expenses that came with all of his new residences, John would lease out his various residences and the Duke and Duchess lived in Kensington Palace or on the grounds of Osborne House. In their later years, John and Louise became closer, with Louise nursing him when he fell ill. John died on the 2nd of May 1914. His wife survived him by 25 years. Prince Henry of Battenberg was the husband of Princess Beatrice, the youngest child of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. Henry was born on the 5th of October 1858 in Italy. His parents were Prince Alexander of Hesse and by Rhine and Countess Julia Hawk. His parents' marriage was more genetic. Upon marriage, his mother was elevated to the rank of Princess of Battenberg and all of their children were given the designation of Battenberg. Henry had four siblings, Marie, Louis, Alexander and Franz Joseph. Henry was commissioned as a lieutenant of the 1st Regiment of Rhenish Hussars in the Prussian army and served as a personal bodyguard of the King of Prussia. In 1884, during the wedding of Henry's brother Louis to Princess Victoria of Hesse and by Rhine, Henry met Princess Beatrice of the United Kingdom. They fell in love and when Beatrice told her mother of her desire to marry Henry, the Queen refused to speak to her daughter for almost seven months. The Queen wanted her daughter to remain unmarried and a companion of the Queen. Eventually, after persuasion from several members of the Queen's family, the Queen began to talk to Beatrice again, and she gave her consent for the marriage on the conditions that Henry renounce his military career, his nationality and home, and agree to live near the Queen. Henry agreed to this. On the 22nd of July 1885, Henry was created a Knight of the Garter and was granted the style of His Royal Highness while in the UK. The next day, they were wed on the Isle of Wight. Henry was also made a naturalised British citizen. During their marriage, they had four children, Alexander, Victoria Eugenie, Leopold and Morris. It is through their daughter that Henry and Beatrice are the ancestors of Felipe VI of Spain. Beatrice carried the haemophilia gene and passed it on to their son, Leopold, who died during a knee operation as well as their son Leopold, Beatrice also passed it on to their daughter, who subsequently passed it on to two of her sons. 
Henry and Beatrice kept their promise and lived near the Queen. Beatrice acted as the Queen's secretary. Henry was bored and wanted to do more. The Queen appointed him as Governor of Carisbrook Castle and Captain General and Governor of the Isle of Wight in 1889. He was also made Lieutenant Colonel in the Army in 1887, Colonel in 1893 and a member of the Privy Council in 1894. However, this was still not enough for Henry, who yearned for freedom away from his oppressive mother-in-law. He persuaded the Queen to allow him to fight in the Anglo-Ashanti Wars. He arrived in Africa on the 25th of December 1895. During the short period in which he was there, he contracted malaria and died while travelling back to England on the 20th of January 1896. He was 37 years old. Beatrice would never remarry and survived him by 48 years, dying in 1944.